Hello and welcome to The Worst Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Wilcox, and today we're going to be talking with Mark Gamma. What's up, Mark? Hey, how's it going? So Mark is our social media dude. We met him through sort of random chance. So I guess we'll start there. Like, how do we end up meeting you, Mark? Honestly, I was looking through social media, Instagram, uh, <laughs> basically about Web3. So I saw this event that you guys were holding, I think back in April, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, you guys had like an open door, kind of like welcome to the gallery, thought, Cool, NFT gallery, let's check it out. And uh, met you guys, first I met Petros, then Deanna, and then the whole team, which was pretty fascinating. Yeah, and it was pretty quick from there. We were like, oh, we like this guy. Uh, Wilcox, <laughs> myself, doesn't really do social media very well. So it was like, oh yeah, we, we could use a mark. Yeah, I was actually looking to see uh, if there's any agencies in Austin that could actually launch my NFTs. And that's why I came in and wanted to check it out because uh, just over the, past few years or yeah a year and a half i've been kind of like trying to launch my own nfts and you know i've gotten burned especially if you don't know where to start i'm like i figured might as well just go with an agency or you know people that actually knows how to how to like launch these things exactly because step zero is hard and that's why this is our zero to nft project uh, mark has had an idea for doing an nft project that we'll get to a little later on but that's the name of the series we're going to be going through soup to nuts conception to delivery of doing an entire nft project so i guess let's take it back oh to the past mark where are you originally from like how'd you end up in austin yeah man uh I'm originally from California, like most people are. Um, <laughs> I kind of came out here on a whim and just needed a new place, needed a new environment and just wanted to start refresh and didn't realize all the Californians were coming over at the same time. Yep. <laughs> so it was kind of a, a big surprise, but I've been loving it here. Uh, coming in in two years now and it feels like I'm, I'm somewhat accepted, right? Yeah, you're, you're almost a full Austinite. I don't know, it, it used to be 10 years, but now it seems like yeah. you're here for two or three, you, you're probably legit. kind of expedited legit. everything. It's like, things are just going so much quickly here, so. It's, it's the speed of innovation. Everything so, gets quicker. It's, it's so interesting. It's <laughs> definitely a, a fun uh, a fun path. So you are all things like motorcycle. I consider you motorcycle dude, and not the classic, yeah, yeah right? Not, not the classic, <laughs> like, you know, boomer motorcycle sort of vertical, mm -hmm. though you do chill with those guys. You're into way cooler stuff, in my opinion. So, like, when did you get into the whole motorcycle world, which kind of, you parlayed into social media? Well, I've been, I started when I was young. Uh, obviously, I actually hid that from my parents, uh, <laughs> you know, riding with my neighbors, my friends, and then really got into it when I was in my 20s and uh, just started riding with anybody. Um, just wanted a community, wanted to ride with other dudes. And, and so back in California, there's a lot of different kind of cliques, right? You got your hipsters, you got your old men, yeah, you, you got, got your, your one percenters, baggers, and you got your one percenters. And uh, it, the good thing about that community is everybody is very welcoming. As long as you ride with, you know, with a motorcycle, you're, you're good to go. Right. It's not about brand, like, oh, you're Harley, you're, you're Crotch Rockets, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of like dying down just because everybody has different tastes now. It's not just like I'm a, you know, diehard Harley guy, which there are still a few. Oh, they definitely. Won't, they wouldn't touch anything at all metric. Yeah, they're going to have their they're gonna have their, their leathers on and they're going to be chilling with their boys on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, and, and to be honest, it's it's kind of a intimidating, I guess, uh, you know, group of guys, right? You it's kind of what kept me out of the world. Like, not really my vibe. Yeah. And, you, you know, especially if you don't know anybody, it's kind of like, dude, like, they're, they're hardcore bikers. <laughs> and once you start talking to them, it's like, oh, you're, you're, a, you're a digital, you know, engineer. You're, you're a, you, you know, you do all these weird stuff that has nothing to do with motorcycles. And then the only thing that brings everybody together is the ride. Right, the camaraderie, mm -hmm. the, the the kinship that you you uh, you grow within like rides and, and hangs, and and that's kind of a, been a, a cool path or journey with uh, riding in California. So you're saying it's it's not necessarily falling into an episode of Sons of Anarchy when you're just trying <laughs> to like ride around and have fun with your with your bike. Oh my gosh, uh, we despise that kind of like you know uh, persona. <laughs> but it's it's funny because I was at Comic Con a few years ago where it was like the last episode of. Uh, oh of uh you know uh sons of anarchy sons of anarchy and like one guy was like yeah man you guys you guys represent the motorcycle community so bad uh, so well 
Uh, <laughs> and then the guys of the cast were just like, uh, I don't think so. Like, we don't, you know, we don't kill people. We don't like do drugs. And, but it's it's kind of a, that's the the perspective of other people that it's doesn't It's the stereotype have, in Hollywood, that's for sure. Had that, yeah, had that camaraderie. So it's it's been a really interesting uh, journey. So I want to talk a little bit about some of your other interests before we get into the NFT project. And this also falls in line with art. So you are into fashion. And normally when someone is into fashion, you're not assuming they're going to be like a motorcycle guy talking to stereotypes. There's far more other stereotypes, as you even said, you were sort of the outlier in, in fashion. So what, how did you find the interest in that? And how did it parlay into the motorcycle world? Well, yeah, I, I used to work for a retail store and I kind of like gotten, you know, moved up into be, becoming a buyer. And they sent me to like downtown L.A., the fashion district, start buying for merchandise and all that stuff. And I just kind of uh, got super interested into it, even though my background is more in business. Uh, I went to school for that. And and uh, fashion was always kind of the underlining of like what I wanted to do. Um, so, yeah, just even going to these motorcycle rides, I would wear the opposite of what everybody was wearing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and over the years, especially the last 10 years, I think the the hipster motorcycle community has, has become more, I, I guess, synonymous to kind of like everyday riding rather than like the stereotypical, you know, leathers and, and bad beards kind of thing. Yeah, we went from the classic like idea of what a motorcycle rider is to like, I, from my perspective, it was like the introduction or popularization of like the cafe racer kind of dudes. Yeah, yeah. And that's what really kind of got dudes like me and younger and a little older like into motorcycles. Absolutely. I think the 2012, 2013, that's kind of where the big hype or resurgence of the cafe racer. So everybody started looking into more of like a, a everyday lifestyle look rather than mm -hmm. You know, leather jacket. Not being as performative. Kind of thing. Exactly. Because <laughs> you don't want to come to a cafe shop and look like a biker. You want to fit in, you know, especially if you're, you know, you're hauling like your gear, right? Let's mm -hmm. say instead of like, you know, knives and, and leather chaps, you're bringing in a laptop and, and <laughs> yeah. ordering cafe. You've got a MacBook and, and your own water bottle. <laughs> exactly. So uh, we were trying to look for something a little bit different from the stereotypical, you know, riding community. And then, so now going into the NFT project itself, you, the genesis of this was you, you put out just a request and like, how, how'd that go? What, what was the request you put out and what was the initial kind of reception you got? So, uh, I got into the NFTs and kind of the web three world, maybe a couple of years ago during, you know, during the pandemic, I uh, just needed something to do more productive when everyone right. was bored and when, yeah. and when web three was blowing up. Exactly. So instead of watching or binging like, you know, Netflix and I needed something productive. And so what I got into was the idea of crypto and web three. And so the idea of actually creating these, uh, you know, non fungible tokens or non fungible, uh, things where, I can actually apply it into the motorcycle world just because we go to these events, we mm. do these communal like uh, group meetings, and there's there's really no takeaway from it, right? We all take pictures of each other's bikes because of like, dude, that's that's a cool bike. Let me take a picture of it. Like, there's a lot of things you take away digitally. I feel like that's kind of where we could go into mm -hmm. that into that uh, the atmosphere of like actually owning things and actually putting it in the blockchain. Yeah, so it's having the, the ability to let people publicly view, own, trade every aspect of like whatever the item is. And have you ever thought of like in the future possibly even like, you know, selling gloves or various things through this, like with a loyalty program kind of thing? And I think that's, that's where I was going with it, mm. right? Like, so instead of like, I think onboarding a lot of uh, a lot of these people that don't know anything about our world is is about utility. It's like what can I get physically, right? There's a lot of things like we buy keychains, we buy stickers, we buy you know uh, helmets and all these cool things that kind of like translates to our identity. Mm -hmm. I think digitally we can actually convert that where it's it's more of like an everyday. Uh, conversation where it's more normalized yeah because yeah. like I, I think the value proposition right now is like what am I buying other than a picture mm -hmm. and then like how do I know that this isn't gonna be rugged or useless in like six months and I think it's about doing what you're doing like being a member of a community before you even look at doing anything with that community 
and then understanding what they do and don't like before you even start trying to put something in front of people because that's the that's the fastest way to get alienated i'm sure like you've seen people be inauthentic in your community and get booted oh, yeah yeah like it's kind of funny that you know um we go to these motorcycle events and the first thing we do is pull out our phones right mm -hmm. you take pictures because we want to kind For of like gram. shoot it and then share it to the the people that's not there it's like a more of a fomo thing it's like mm -hmm. hey uh, i'm here at the show blah 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 um why can't we do that with nfts right uh so just changing the language a bit because every time i talk to anybody and calling it nft they just Totally it's kind of a dirty down. word now. It's a dirty word. So what was the what was the synonym that you came up with that seemed to be well, a lot so softer? I think in I think in April, Instagram started uh, releasing their their digital assets or digital collectibles, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can actually apply your NFTs into uh, your your Instagram feed, and it actually has a blockchain and actually have your information on it. And I thought that was really cool just because there there is this thing about like stealing other people's content, right? Oh we yeah, freebooting as it's referred to as. Yeah, just yeah. literally screenshotting or stealing something, uploading it and being like, I made this. Yeah, especially for a bike builder where, you know, he or she would spend months on building a bike. Tons of effort, tons of time, tons of money. They shoot it, they they expose it out to the world and then months, you know, weeks or months later, it's gone, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's a great avenue for, to, to bring revenue within the motorcycle. So if you can't buy this motorcycle, you can actually have a piece of it or at least have some kind of communal like uh, back where you can actually uh, support this builder, support this artist, photographer, videographer. And these are the people that's that I'm working with. A lot of a lot of artistic people are, are in to motorcycling because mm -hmm. it's an expression of who you are, you know, it's, it's using your hands. It's, 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 uh, getting into, you know, getting to open spaces and, and feeling the environment, you it's know, all, on it's two all wheels. The, the, the journey, it, it's getting to do every aspect of it. You're not simply just working yeah. on a thing. You're not yeah. just buying stuff. You're not just writing. It's the culmination of all of it together. Absolutely. So it's, it's a, it's a very interesting world. And, uh, you know, I, I love partnering with you guys and, and learning more from the really smart people, right? <laughs> just letting the nerds just brain dump to you on the Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and I, all, all I'm doing is like literally taking notes, right? It's kind of like the first it. steps. He's, he's big and he physically writes notes. It's weird. I have notebooks. I uh, <laughs> definitely have notebooks. And and so trying to trying to fit in or trying to like, you know, uh, find the vernacular of like abbreviations and all the things that you guys talk about, I'll go home and like Google every little abbreviation. I'm like, oh, <laughs> That's uh, yeah, that that makes sense. Literally just going up the glossary. Yeah, and it's kind of like you know that's the thing about um, Web three is there is an educational, there's a learning curve, right? And mm -hmm. everybody needs to start somewhere. And and uh, I mean, it didn't take me that long to get into it, right? And the more discovery you you get into, the fascinating things it just kind of opens up, right? There's different roads, so it's not just like NFTs. That's what everybody's doing. No. Mm -hmm. I, I really learned that, you know, Web3 is much more of a bigger... It is far scope. more than NFTs. Yeah. So <laughs> that's kind of what I am trying to introduce to other people about uh, Web3 is... It's not just about, you know, JPEGs and PFPs. It's all about kind of like bring community together, community utility, um, and something tangible that you can actually carry on to this mm -hmm. uh, to this technology yeah one of our clients or a uh, person who heads up round 21 jasmine uses the term uh, digi fizzy uh, which is you know the, the idea of, yeah. of getting a, a physical thing for participation within a, a digital program or rewards program or something uh, i wanted to move on to the art itself so you put out for uh just submissions like hey guys i have an idea i'd like to see what you guys have and we'll, we'll put some on the screen but uh, take me through like Wow, what was the kind of stuff you got initially? Yeah, so eight months ago, I actually uh, put the call out or call to action and say, hey, if you are interested, if you're an artist, bu bike builder, uh, photographer, anything that has anything valuable. Yeah, anything tangentially visually, related, yeah. Uh, would love to create your NFTs and kind of create a, a NFT gallery within the Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe I had two or three submissions and they were very skeptical and like, what is this like? Am I making any money? Like, are you gonna steal my? <laughs> is this a scam? My content, yeah. And uh, it was kind of funny. So I kind of uh, 
you know, took a step back, did a little bit more research about Web3, and then relaunched that call to action about a month and a half ago. And I called it digital assets or mm -hmm. digital collectibles. And um, thinking, all right, maybe I can get a dozen people yeah. interested. Like I've, I've changed the messaging a little bit. Here. Absolutely. So uh, the very next day, I checked my messages and my DMs. There was about 70 uh, different types of 70. accounts. That, that is a ton. That's a lot more than a dozen. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, my Instagram page is, has about 47,000 followers and all that stuff. So um, 70 is pretty good great right yeah Especially that's a really good return compared to three or five people and then uh you know week into it there it was a total of about 130 submissions and they're all great they're wow. all great like there's you know there's people that was submitting their work from like brazil to like uk to like you know southeast asia so it was it was definitely not just you know the u.s or you know california it was the worldwide it was worldwide and so I realized, like, this is, this is, we, we have something here. It's sticky, as marketers would say. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, that's why, you know, I kind of pitched the idea to you guys and, you know, think, hey, if we can help kind of uh, launch this thing, I think it'll be really interesting. Especially motorcycles and, and technology doesn't really align as much. Talking about right? things that are classically carbureted exactly. and uh, using older yeah. technology by like definition, yeah. typically. I mean, we're still kind of like pushing away the like the whole electric motorcycle kind of thing, right? <laughs> we're we're, we're going to hold on to our combustional engines as long as we can. Uh, but it's, it's coming. I think this technology is definitely here to stay and uh, just want to apply it to everyday real world stuff. So how, how in the world are we going to decide whom we're going to use, like yeah. wh whose stuff? So, um, I mean, there's a few different ways to think about it. How many do you think you want to end at? How many people total or how many pieces for the initial like drop? I think the inaugural launch should be about six artists, right? A good so number. I wanted to space it out from photographers, videographers, Bike builders as well. Mm -hmm. um, and Bike builders specifically, because, I mean, people doing all the work generally don't get nearly as much like credit because they're too busy working. Exactly. And they honestly, they, they really don't know how to uh, sell a bike uh, without selling the bike, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what else can I sell? They sell parts, they sell T-shirts, hats, and all that stuff. I think this is kind of like another extension of, of marketing and merchandising mm -hmm. their product, you know? Oh, definitely. I, I sure much to your chagrin. I remember the Orange, the uh, Orange County Choppers guys, the yep. OCC, you know, uh, father and son. Um, I could see some of their custom bikes back in the day definitely fitting in line with like this kind of project, like because they did pretty over the top. I mean, more showpiece than things you ride, but yeah, absolutely, pr pretty I, much falls right in line with that. I think that that would be a really great uh, kind of use case for it. Um, there's a lot of bike builders out there currently right now that's building amazing motorcycles and, and collectibles that no one's really touching mm -hmm. unless you've been to the show or the, you follow their feed, right? And so I think, uh, you know, having these digital assets or collectibles can really kind of like expand their uh, their uh, reach. Yeah, yeah, widen their breadth of like who they're actually getting to talk to and see their stuff. Yeah, and I think... You know, motorcycles are sexy. Like just they're like, cool. Just They're like cars. Cool. You're into cars, right? Yeah, like, I'm, a, I'm a drift kid. I get yeah. it. So you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a biker to appreciate these like appreciate these uh, machines. It's it's someone who could be just a fan and just can be strolling through your feed and mm -hmm. like look at something and think it's cool. And you want to you know you want to um, give give a little thanks to that creator or give them you know some backup and monetarily just give them give them some money to purchase this NFT. And I think it's a, it's a very cool avenue to, to get into. Awesome. So what do you think with, it's your first time doing it, obviously it's the first drop. What's your metric for success for this project? It could be just literally putting it out there. I don't know. What, what do you think I mean, personally? I think the outreach would be more of my, my goal, right? So instead of minting hundred percent, it's, it's more or less like, let's 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 put more eyeballs into kind of what we're doing so you know i'm not expecting to sell sell out mm -hmm. but at the same time if we can have 
ideas uh, grow into kind of like these accessible, um, you know, ventures. Mm. I think getting the industry, especially in the motorcycle industry, we need to kind of like explore more of just like the biker world because we're selling. I feel like nowadays we're just selling bikes to other bikers. Which means uh, whenever that person isn't around anymore, that's one less person in your world. You yeah. always need to be increasing. Think the Nintendo Switch kind of way of doing it. Yeah. So our outreach needs to be more of a lifestyle and more mm-hmm. of like the everyday guy that wants a little bit of adventure. It doesn't mean they have to go full-blown motorcycle guy, but, um, you know, having different kinds of interests and different kinds of like uh, activities that you can do. It's like, you know, taking up like gardening it's the same thing, right? Yep. Um, so, I guess the goal is to to um, to get to get Web three more into different people's avenues or different like you know feeds, social platforms. Yeah, just just opening up the world of Web three to the non Web three es. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So our next step is going to be choosing artists. Is there one that you think is going to make the cut already that we could mention? Or do you want to keep it all a secret at the moment? I mean, yes, there's a few that I've already contacted and they're stoked about it. Kind of just told them the roadmap of like, you know, okay. It's kind of like the thing is like, all right, we we do the NFTs, we sell out, then what's next? Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, building the roadmap of like continuing the process and actually growing your community is more important than just selling your NFTs, you know, the first go, right? Yeah, is ensuring it's not just a one and done. Exactly. And so there's a few I've already contacted. Um, I guess we'll we'll keep that uh, Keep it on the DL. Because I haven't contacted everybody and let them know, like, hey, sorry. <laughs> and so I <laughs> asked the way forward, I but did. But next time, we'll keep your, your you know, we'll keep your uh, name in the file. But uh, would love to, I mean, on it, obviously would love to get everybody on board with it. So if those, you know, 130 are still interested afterwards, you know, we can make something out of it. Right, yeah, just because people don't make the initial cut doesn't mean that they don't have good stuff. When you have to pare it down, it becomes infinitely harder with every, like, less slot you have to fill. Yeah, and I chose these uh, artists because they already have some basic knowledge of Web3. Mm-hmm. And they're very interested. And um, why I chose them is because of their their content, uh, their work, and then also they're already looking into Web three, mm-hmm. right? And the so first, you don't have to make that that case already. Well, the first thing that they say is like, I'm interested. I've been looking at you know I've been watching YouTube. I've been watching Gary V and all these people that talks about it, but it's all kind of the same general like pitch. Yep. Right. And so. I need I need to know where to start, and so I think that's that really inspired me to like take them on and and kind of help them grow their you know their collection. Awesome. So if people would like to get in touch with you to work on this to help on this project, are you looking for submissions still? If someone wants to get in, can yeah, they still absolutely. submit? Yeah, I'm always yeah we're always looking for uh, submissions. Cool. So what uh, avenue should they hit you up on? So I have uh, Instagram and then also our. our uh, our uh, website. So our Instagram is Los Angeles Moto. Pretty okay. simple enough. And then uh, our website is Los Angeles Moto.org. Cool. And I'll, I'll put those up on the screen. So yeah. they're right around here somewhere. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you so much for like talking to me about this, Mark. I thought it was great that you wanted to do this project with us and you chose us to help you like go through it all. I'm really stoked to be here from ground zero. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think you guys are great. Um, you guys are doing all phenomenal things with other uh, other projects and companies. So let's keep going. Well, thank you very much for watching The Worst Podcast. And thanks again, Mark, for being on today. If you want to check out any of our stuff, feel free to go to wrst.co or check us out at Worst Collabs on social media. Thanks.